There have been a lot of survival games coming out recently, and one that really caught my interest is called Soul Mask. This game is all about basically collecting masks over really hundreds of hours of content, where you're basically you know, going through different dungeons and ruins and stuff, as well as fighting bosses, and ultimately collecting different types of masks that give you different abilities, and allow you to, you know, you can basically upgrade the masks and do all kinds of things to uh, ultimately build up your character, build up your base, uh, but also build up an, up an empire throughout, you know, throughout these hours of content, you're, you're basically controlling different people, you're able to become different characters, different humans, the almost like tame, and these different characters have different um, like higher uh, stats in certain stats than your base character. So this is a really unique take on the survival genre, and I want to talk about it in this video. So really, the gameplay loop is probably the most important thing that we want to talk about right now. So let's dive right in. The gameplay loop of Soul Mask really revolves around sort of your, at first, your typical survival experience where, you know, you're gathering resources, building up a base, uh, you know, eventually able to essentially you're able to grab people, kind of lower them down to low health, and then almost tame them. That's the only way I know how to describe them. You're basically like taking their souls and then they're like, they're just chill. They're like, hey, I'm going to be your friend now. And so you can acquire this almost sort of this like small group or eventually like kind of an army of people. Uh, and really the purpose of taming these people as far as the gameplay loop goes is they can do tasks for you. They can help you build stuff. They can help you, uh, you know, craft items or even fight for you. And there's a whole lot of complexity that I haven't even explored myself when it comes to the assembly lines that you can set up with these people, um, you know, getting them to, to do all kinds of different tasks and really contribute to your, uh, your survival and you thriving in this world in a way where you're not having to do a lot of stuff manually anymore. You know, they're kind of just doing it for you. But beyond these NPCs, you know, just your character themselves, what is the gameplay like when you're kind of just traveling, uh, you know, exploring the world? Pretty much there are these like scout barbarian or sort of these, essentially they're called like scouts that are kind of scattered around different camps. And these scouts are humans that you have to lower down to low HP and then suck their souls out of their mind. And when you do that, it actually expands the map, the like fog of war. So it shows you more of the map. And that's how you kind of explore and get a lay of the land is by basically like taking the knowledge of these people that already kind of know a lot about it. Um, they don't actually, unlike the other characters, when you sort of try and tame the humans, uh, the scouts actually just kind of like, they just go back to trying to fight you after you gain their knowledge. But that's basically how you explore the map or, or how you sort of get a better idea of it and how you can see more and, and unlock more. And then eventually you find, you know, these different points of interest that are pretty significant. As you explore around, you can eventually find where you basically summon bosses. And I'll talk about that in just a sec. But the bosses are a central thing to allowing you to get, I think, like keys and stuff to head into different locations, such as the pyramids, to basically discover and explore and find more masks. Um, and that is, again, like the central sort of purpose is it's very, uh, it's very grindy and focused on kind of, you know, okay, let's gather all these masks and then deck them out in these like mask skill trees, which you can see here, which is basically like, a whole knowledge tree of like different abilities and passives and all kinds of different things that improve your masks. Um, and each one of these masks has different things that you can sort of fill out. So there's definitely a lot of content here for people to be playing with. And that's basically the gameplay loop of Soul Mask, uh, more or less. You know, you're exploring the map, um, gathering, you know, building your bases, gathering stuff, uh, gathering people as well, and, you know, uh, allowing your, your kind of empire to expand as you're trying to explore and master this world and the, you know, the world of Soul Mask. Again, the, the whole sort of tribe system is very important when it comes to the game. You know, expanding your whole group beyond just you is super important because um, being able to fight effectively is not going to be possible if you're just sticking with your main your your main character that you play as normally that can like respawn because you want to basically tame these people that have higher max stats raise up their stats and then they can ultimately fight to a better degree or craft or do whatever it is that they're good at to a better degree than your base character was. The only thing is that kind of, it's kind of cool to me, it's like your characters, the, the people that you tame or bring into your tribe, the NPCs, can actually die and they die permanently. They don't respawn. So you just have to be mindful of that as well. And that's kind of like an always ongoing threat. And the game is really mainly meant to be played in PvE. That's kind of like how it was designed around. PvP is still certainly there. 
Um, but it's mainly a PvE type game that's really focused on, you know, if you don't have friends, these NPCs, maybe they can't be your friends, but they can certainly be valuable assets to you that would almost stand in as friends, uh, or at least in what they would be able to do. But speaking of friends, one of the most fun activities for me when I was playing Soul Mask with my buddies was actually just fighting and combat in general. Um, there's a lot of different, you know, even if you're just by yourself, there's tons of different weapons that you can use to really, um, you know, figure out which one is your favorite and then just completely eviscerate enemies. So, you know, there's like dual bladed weapons. Uh, there's like a, there's different spears that you can basically like grapple hook sort of Scorpio people <laughs> with. It's really awesome. Um, there are sort of larger weapons, I think like a hammer as well as like, you know, giant swords and stuff. And so there's all kinds of different weapons you can be playing with. You know, of course there's like bows, bows and arrows. Um, my favorite was probably the dual blades after playing with them for a little bit. That was also pretty much the favorite of my buddy after she got a, a chance to really play with the, the dual blades. So overall combat I would say is pretty snappy. It's pretty fun. And that is one of the things that I enjoyed the most about the game. Um, even just in the sort of early, you know, first impressions of playing with it, you know, just constantly being able to pull off moves and do different, you know, with the dual blades, you can like slash really, really fast, or you can do this cool, like spinny attack that just feels like attack on Titan. Um, I don't know. I Maybe I'm just like very simple minded and giddy about about uh, uh, combat and stuff, but that was really fun for me. And that, that kind of system really keeps me engaged in a game like Soul Mask when it is very grindy, certainly. There's so much to do, so much to craft and to build and to kind of explore. And so the combat, the fact that it's good is a huge win, and I think we'll you'll keep people engaged. I'm curious to know what you guys think if you have played Soul Mask or you if you plan on playing Soul Mask, what you think about the combat. It is important, of course, that the combat is good when it comes to bosses. And I only actually managed to fight one of the bosses. Um, and like I said, it's sort of this it's sort of this uh, saber tooth tiger type guy with a with like a cloudy eye, and it is. There's a couple more. I think there's like a BLZ buff or like a like a frog type boss, um, and a few others I'm not super familiar with. I know there's like a whole a whole lot. Of, I think there's maybe five or ten or something. Um, but the the one that I fought the, the cat was just horrifying. It, it's really based on the on like actual cats in real life. You know, like actual I would assume um, you know cougars or. Um, or jaguars or, or any of these sort of cats, you know, felines that are that are trying to kill their prey. Um, and that is very reflective when you're fighting this boss because it's basically, it tries to circle you and you have to dodge out of the way. And if you turn your back on it, it will go berserk. It, it, it like, it like just turns on some kind of instinctual desire to kill. And this thing will just mess you up if you turn your back. And I was actually trying to use that to my advantage by artificially making it go after me so I could preemptively dodge. Uh, but because it attacks so much more ferociously when you do turn your back, it was kind of biting me in the ass um, more so than it was helping me. But yeah, that boss is, uh, for just being the first one that I fought and the only one that I fought, I think that gets me really excited about the rest of them because as much as I haven't fought them, if they're all based on kind of like these realistic behaviors, then I think there's a lot there to explore and to have fun with, um, with these sorts of like really tough bosses that you just really need to die pretty much over and over again to, to beat and you know a lot of dodge rolling and a lot of just trial and error and you can certainly do it with friends of course and that would probably make it easier in some ways harder than others um, but yeah bosses are awesome and they're actually really really challenging it's it's yes there's a component of like you need gear score you need a certain level of gear to be able to take it on but there's also a level of like well even once you've reached that just having the perseverance to fight this thing and to survive or to, to keep coming back is a whole other component that needs to be there for you to be able to win. Um, now, when it comes to, you know, a lot of the other elements, uh, you know, just sort of a 180, when it comes to a lot of the other elements outside of the gameplay loop and the combat and the bosses, you know, with sort of the almost artistic design, things like music, uh, story, visuals, I would say Soul Mask is a little bit well music wise it doesn't actually have really any music except for this like looping track that just plays over and over again that at least that i saw in the demo um, by the time it comes out into early access i assume it may have uh, music in the game um, certainly like more music 
but as far as that, there wasn't really much to, to really comment on, neither with sound design. There wasn't a whole lot of sound design, um, though, of course, it does have sound. The story, I would also say, um, the, I didn't see much of it. I know that there's like these stone tablets that you can find, but I didn't get a chance to really find any of those. So I don't totally know to what degree there is a story in Soul Mask. And then the visuals uh, were actually quite nice. Um, you know, you'll, you'll notice throughout watching gameplay that I think the, the graphics of the game bode pretty well. Um, I think it's on Unreal Engine 4 and, you know, for for its time. I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. I think it looks pretty good. And it's certainly, you know, not bad to look at. Um, you know, I could look at that kind of these kinds of visuals for for many, many hours. So now I kind of want to talk a little bit about just pros and cons of these first impressions of Soul Mask, just things that I liked and things that I didn't like. Um, so some of the pros, uh, really, you know, cool concept for the tribe system. Uh, recruiting people is very unique. And I haven't really played any games I don't think ever before any survival games where you're like recruiting human NPCs that was really awesome and uh, being able to just kind of have them oh actually no. no well okay no there I have played other survival games where you can do that but setting them on specific tasks is not something I've ever like been able to do um, just in this type of game so that was really cool very unique and um, uh, you know, knowing that there's so much more you can do with them that I didn't even get to, like with assembly lines and having them craft different stuff uh, is really cool. Combat, again, like I've talked about, is fantastic. There's there's great diversity in weapons and skills. Uh, the map is huge. There is so much to explore. And uh, and as much as I, at first I was like, is it just too big? Is there, there's not like, is there enough stuff to fill out the space? But as I started to explore it, I've started to feel like yeah actually this this is like pretty fittingly big maybe it could be a little bit smaller to make the density higher uh, of you know different camps and points of interest but generally it felt pretty pretty balanced and I really liked just how um, just how vast and and immersive it was in that sense uh, multiplayer is pretty straightforward playing with friends is pretty easy and and snappy um, you know to join tribes you pretty much just like do it in this menu and then you can you can just find each other pretty quickly. Uh, there was one thing I noticed, the icons uh, for different items are very good. They fit together pretty well. There's kind of this cohesive, visually pleasing art style when it comes to what you might call like the sprites or just the icons for different items for, you know, wood, thatch, fiber, um, weapons, etc. Really liked a lot of those. The graphics are, again, nice. Nighttime isn't too dark, so kind of the visibility of the game, again, being able to like actually see at night isn't too bad, um, especially because, you know, there's torches and stuff. So I, th I thought that there was a good balance there. Um, and I also really like the look of the armor. I only got to play with two or three types of different armor, but what I had seen looked good. You know, I, I always like when there's sort of this, um, you know, when I'm able to deck my character out in certain gear and, and I'm like happy with how they look, you know, it doesn't look too goofy. Um, so when it comes to cons, I would say building can be a little finicky. Um, there, it feels very, a uh, little bit like an ancient kind of building system. I, I would appreciate if there's more cohesion when it comes to picking different building pieces and being able to build quickly um, and build really like what you want. Um, NPCs don't seem to repair their own tools when they break as well. So if they break their weapons, it seems like they just can't actually get back to tasks. Could be wrong on that. I could have just not figured out how to do it, but that was just what I had noticed. And then one of the biggest cons I would say for me, as well as just like worrying about for other players, is that there's a lot of information. I think that it can be very overwhelming for new players. You know, there's so much to so much to, to do, to craft, so much that you can explore. And there's just a lot there. I know for my brand, I was just like, whoa, this is like <clears throat> a lot. This is like a little overwhelming. There's so much, so much I'm looking at here. So I think that, you know, helping to ease players along um, would go so like such a long way in actually like helping them on better understand the game um you know so that's that's definitely like a challenge because when you have so much information like how do you communicate this to the player in sort of in a more like to where you're moving them along fast enough to where they don't get bored but also like not overloading them with tons of information 
And one of the last uh, cons that I had was just like human enemies can be pretty bullet spongy and take a wild kill. Even if you throw a freaking spear in some guy's head, like it can take quite a few throws or or attacks to just take someone down um, if they're way higher level than you. So it seemed like the the higher level was mostly like a uh, again like a gear score type of thing where if you're going to human settlements where they have high level characters, it's not so much about being limited by skill but it's more so limited by like just if your weapon does enough damage so that at times was was kind of frustrating to have to to deal with where you're just trying to kill an enemy but he's just taking forever like infinite spear throws to kill um but you know i guess i i guess that just means you need to go to areas that you're equipped to go to you know with your gear score so Overall, the, you know, those, those were pretty much my pros and cons, um, thoughts on the game overall, um, different things that I noticed and picked up along the way. But based on kind of what I've talked about and shown, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I think overall Soul Mask is a really fun, unique little survival game. And again, when I say little, it's, it's really gigantic. Definitely eager to see um, really kind of what the overall response to Soul Mask is over the next, uh, next few weeks with the beta, or the, I think it's like a demo that they have. Yeah, so they've actually got a demo right now. I don't know for how long you'll be able to play it. If it's available now, I'll leave a link in the description and you y'all can check that out and let them know what you think. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, I believe it's gonna release into early access um, in the coming, just over the summer. So do really do keep an eye on this one. Also, this video was sponsored by the developers of Soul Mask. So I just wanted to thank them for uh, really helping the channel out and you know telling us about this game and having us take a look. Aside from the sponsorship itself, I really did enjoy my time with Soul Mask. So um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you all so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.